All right, let's take a look at sports news. And here's Barong to a new ranta. Thank you, Joman. Welcome to Sports News. Team Nigeria has make, taken its medals haul at the ongoing Commonwealth Games to eight, with an impressive four gold and two silver medals, all coming from the para powerlifting event earlier today. Roland Azurike claimed Nigeria's first gold medal of the Games in the men's 72 kilogram para powerlifting lightweight event after successfully lifting 188 kilograms and 194 kilograms, amassing a total of 224.3 points. Nigeria's Esther Oyemos smashed the world record in the women's 48.10 kilograms lightweight category, securing a lift of 131 kilograms. Indidi Mosu dominated the women's heavyweight category with a weight class of 69.10 kilograms after garnering 110.4 points, having recorded clean lifts of 110 kilograms and 120 kilograms. Abdulaziz Ibrahim made it four, lifting 220 kilograms with a score of 199.1 in the men's heavyweight. The struggling Heartland FC have named Turkish tactician Mehmet Typhoon as their new coach till the end of the current season. The Iberia-based outfit say Typhoon was contracted by Turkish second division club Boluspor, who were also their technical partners. The 55-year-old has been mandated to steer the Nays Millionaires out of the relegation zone. The former Nigeria FA Cup champions currently lie in 16th position with 17 points. And elsewhere, AS Roma pulled off a sensational second leg comeback to beat Barcelona 3-0 and reach the UEFA Champions League semi-finals on away goals. Barcelona were heavy favourites to progress after a 4-1 first leg win, but fell apart to Roma's brilliant showing. Elsewhere, Liverpool reached their first Champions League semi-final for 10 years after coming from behind to win at Manchester City and secure a 5-1 aggregate win. The Reds survived the siege by Pep Guardiola's men in the first half, trailing by just a goal. But second half goals from Mohamed Salah and Roberto, Roberto Formigno gave Liverpool the victory. A joint South American bid to host the 2030 World Cup will feature eight cities in Argentina, two in Paraguay and two in Uruguay. Argentina and Uruguay, who have both won the World Cup twice, decided to launch a joint bid last year and later added Paraguay, who have never won the tournament. The bid is designed to coincide with the 100th anniversary of the first World Cup, which took place in Uruguay in 1930. No other bids have been announced for the 2030 tournament. And that's it on Sports for tonight. I'm Barong Tony Iranta and Ijama will be back with a wrap. Thanks a lot, Barong. U.S. President Donald Trump will not be attending a pre-planned trip to Latin America in order to continue monitoring the situation in Syria. The White House says the president would rather oversee America's response to the issue of a suspected chemical attack in the country. Earlier today, President Trump had promised a forceful response after calling out Russia for supporting the Assad regime. The Western world has rallied against the alleged chemical attack in Dorma, in the eastern Ghouta region near the capital, Damascus. The U.S., France and the U.K. have led international condemnation of the attack. Russia could stop this senseless slaughter if it wanted, but it stands with the Assad regime and supports without any hesitation. What's the, poor, what's the point of trying to shame such people? After all, no civilized government would have anything to do with Assad's murderous regime. U.S. President Donald Trump has promised a quick, forceful action in response. We're making a decision as to what we do with respect to the horrible attack that was made near Damascus and it will be met, and it will be met forcefully. Russia's representative Vasily Nebenzia says the alleged attack was staged and warned that U.S. military action in response could have grave repercussions. Uh, our military radiological, biological, chemical unit was, was on site over the alleged chemical accident, and it confirmed that there was no no chemical substances found on the ground. Between August 2013 and February 2018, there have been at least 85 confirmed chemical attacks in Syria, with the Syrian government responsible for at least 50 of them. Some with foam.
Yulia Skripal, the daughter of former Russian double agent Sergei Skripal, has been discharged. The hospital says she left Salisbury Hospital in, and that has happened that way. Now, the father and daughter were taken to hospital on March the 4th after being exposed to the toxic nerve agent Novchik. They were found slumped on a park bench in the center of Salisbury. Medical director of Salisbury District Hospital told reporters outside the hospital that her treatment continues, but her leaving hospital is a significant milestone, while Prime Minister Theresa May wished her the best for her continuing recovery. And for the first time since 2002, the Zimbabwean government will be allowing Western powers enter the country to monitor its national elections. The ban on international observers was lifted by President Emerson Gagwa. Zimbabwe will invite the United States, the European Union's Commission and Parliament, Australia and the Commonwealth among 46 countries and 15 organizations, as shown in the list released by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. These countries and groups were all previously banned from watching elections in 2002 after then-President Robert Mugabe accused them of favoring his opponents. The West slapped sanctions on Mugabe and members of his inner circle, accusing them of rigging a series of votes. The government denied the accusations. And the main news again. Federal lawmakers today expressed mixed reactions to President Muhammadu Buhari's declaration to seek re-election in 2019. While opposition lawmakers said the president was pushed into taking the decision, APC legislators insisted that President Buhari did it in his own time. Also today, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, read the Riot Act to officers and soldiers, threatening to deal with any service personnel that are compromised by politicians during the elections. And U.S. President Donald Trump today cancelled his first official trip to Latin America in order to focus on a suspected chemical attack in Syria. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Vinyato. Do have a good night.